Hi everyone, I hope you're all having an amazing day. This is gonna be another short compilation video of a few species I captured with my Laoba 90mm ultra micro lens on my Canon R7. Before jumping to the images, I'd like to briefly discuss one of the main reasons why I chose this lens to be my go-to macro lens. Besides the excellent image and build quality, it is capable of shooting up to 2x all the way to infinity, which makes it a super versatile lens and you can use it even for portraits, for example. For macro photography, this flexibility comes very handy when you are dealing with very tiny subjects such as this whirligig mite or larger ones like this wandering perched dragonfly. I also highly recommend when you are out in the field exploring to take as many shots as possible not only from different angles but also at different magnification ratios which is not only going to improve your photographic composition techniques but also help you identify the species that you are capturing. In today's compilation I want to show you a few species I captured at 0.5 to 1 at 1 to 1 and 2 to 1 magnification ratios or single frames. I hope you all like them. Also don't forget to subscribe if you love macros and you're new to my channel. I will also leave links specifically for you in the description box that you might be interested in. Anyway thanks for watching and let's have a look at those shots now. Our first subject is the beautiful flower of a fijoa. This first image was taken at 0.5 to 1 magnification and you can see almost the entire flower. This flower has heaps of long red filaments with anthers on top and the taller stalk in the middle is called the style, which plays a crucial role in fertilization. In this second shot I focused on the closest enter at 1 to 1 magnification and in the very last image you can see even more detail of this interesting structure that produces and contains pollens. Our second subject is a predatory lacewing larva I spotted in our garden. This specimen was really small, less than a centimeter in length and was quite active kept moving around on this leaf and even moved to the underside a few times so it took me a fair bit of time to capture this series. Even at 1 to 1 magnification ratio at f11 you can see that from certain angles only a very small portion of our subject is in focus. The depth of field is quite shallow but was fortunate enough to grab a decent image at the maximum magnification with this side portrait where you can see quite a bit of detail of its large pincers that are hollow and used to inject venom into its victims. These larvae are voracious feeders and can eat up to 200 aphids in a single week. Our third subject was super small, approximately 2 mm in length and is a jumping plant lice. These are small plant feeding insects that tend to be very host specific which means that each plant lice species only tends to feed on one specific plant species which is called monophagus. In the last two shots you can even see some detail in their minuscule compound eyes. This next subject is a very common fly species that can be found throughout the world and is called the blue butterfly. The abdomen of this species has a blue metallic sheen which helps with the identification. I found this specimen preening itself on the leaf of our Swiss cheese plant and luckily it wasn't skittish so I managed to get pretty close to it. These flies are among the most important insect evidence in forensic science, specifically for obtaining time of colonization and post-mortem interval, which refers to the time that has elapsed since an individual's death. Our second last subject is one of my favorite. This tiny orb beaver that belongs to the genus Plebs was resting on our Swiss cheese plant too. I was super lucky to capture a video of it building its web the other day, including the construction of its web decoration called Stabilimentum, whose function is to deter, for example, birds from flying into the web. This specimen was approximately 10 to 12 millimeters in length and in the very last image you can see the intricate patterns on its huge abdomen and the tiny eyes on its cephalothorax. I left the jumping spider species for last. I found this specimen, which is most likely a white striped Ocrisiona on our fence. It was extremely timid and kept hiding in tiny crevices, so had to be patient to be able to grab these portraits. I really love the intricate detail of the CT, the tiny hair-like structures on its body, and if you look closely, there is an area of its abdomen where even some iridescence is visible. By the way, if you love jumping spiders, don't forget to check out my playlist. I think you will enjoy those videos too.